Here's how to play Commander in Magic the Gathering. First, here's what you need to start. You need an EDH deck, sleeves, and a deck box. This will cost around $60. And an optional thing you could get is dice and a playmat. These will cost around $30 in addition to the $60. I'll have links to everything you need in the description down below. You can make a deck or already buy one made, which those are called pre-constructed decks. They will range in prices that are typically $30 to $50, but you can find some at your local game store or online with stores like TCG Player, Card Kingdom, or Amazon. So how do you actually play? Well, let's walk through it together with a pre-constructed deck, or pre-con for short, starting with Exit from Exile. So this is the Exit from Exile pre-con. I have already sleeved it up and it comes with tokens. So these represent whenever a card says, for example, you're going to create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. This is what it's talking about. So that's the great thing about pre-constructed decks whenever you're starting out. It's going to come with the tokens needed. So this is our commander, Faldorn Dreadwolf Herald. And it says that its cost is one red green, and that's at the top right. Its power is a 3-3, three, three, and that includes its toughness as well. So three power and three toughness on the right. It is a legendary creature, which a legendary creature has to be your commander, which that meets that need. And it's also a human druid, which doesn't matter in this deck right now. But Faldorn says, whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, we will create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token, which is shown here. So these are not in your deck. These are set to the side, just like our commander, which I'll explain in a minute. We pay one and tap Faldorn. So we pay one colorless mana. That, that can be a colored mana if we wanted to. It's just saying we have to at least pay one mana. And we have to tap our commander to discard a card. We're then going to exile the top card of our library, and we can only play that this turn. So I'm going to shuffle this deck, and we're just going to get a taste of how to play it. And if you're new to shuffling these decks, it can be a little complicated. So how I do it is I typically separate them into two piles, and then I just shuffle this half. And how I do that is I'll cut it in half again. So now it's quarters, and I will shuffle them diagonal to each other. It's kind of hard to do uh, sideways, but when you see it top down, it might be a little better. So it's like they're cutting into it. They're not exactly going into each other like that. They're going in diagonal, and you kind of release pressure. But that can be for another video. So once we have our deck shuffled, I'm going to show you how to start playing. I recommend shuffling around seven to ten times. And then once you do that, we're going to set our deck down. You can even cut it like I do, just to give more randomness to it. And you set it to the side. So this is your library. Your tokens don't have to be on your playmat, so I'm going to put them above the playmat and your commander will be to the side as well. So we're gonna look at the top seven cards and you're not gonna show these to your opponents, but for this example, I'm gonna show you what my hand is. And we're gonna need seven cards and we're gonna take a look. So typically I recommend around three lands. And right now we only have two lands, which are right here. We can tell these are lands because in the text, this is a type of card, it says basic land. So we know that we have two basic lands, and the rest are spells. And we know they're spells because of the top right, it tells us their cost. So we have to pay at least two of whatever and one red mana to cast Bone Crusher Giant. Or for example, with Escape to the Wilds, we have to pay five mana total. Three can be whatever color, but we have to pay a red and a green to be able to cast this. So we are going to try this. I don't know how it's going to work, because typically, like I said, I recommend three lands. How we go about this, let's say we want to keep our hand and the rest of the players want to keep their hands as well. So now we are going to, assuming we go first in the game, we're going to draw a card. 
and we're going to look at our hand, and we will want to play a land first. And after that, we will not be able to do anything, and we'll have to pass the turn. So we'll play a forest, and then we'll pass to the second, the third, and the fourth player, and they'll each have their turns, and when it's our turn again, we're going to draw a card. And so every turn has phases. So what's really important to learn at first is untap, upkeep, draw. Right now, none of that matters besides draw because nothing is happening right now. So we'll go through our phases. Untap, we did that. We didn't have anything tapped, but we would. let's say I did tap that on our turn and it's gone around the table. It's our turn again. We're going to untap. We get to do that with all permanents. And permanents are things that are on the battlefield. They're not in the graveyard. They're not in exile. They're not in the command zone. They're on the battlefield. And so now that this is untapped, we'll go to upkeep. Nothing happens on our upkeep because there's nothing that tells us. And so now we get to draw a card. And we drew a mountain, which is a good thing. So now we can play and explore. So let's play that mountain we just drew. So we have a green that we have to pay, and we have one of any color, which is great. And this says we can play an additional land this turn, and we get to draw a card. You could do either one in any order. So I'm going to wait to see what land we draw, if we do draw a land, and see if we can go from there. So we've played this, and whenever we play it, it will go to the graveyard. So we've shown our opponents, we're playing Explore, and now, now we will draw a card. It is a Passionate Archaeologist. So since this lets us play an additional land, we're going to do that. And we can only play one land each turn normally, but this card allows us to bypass that. It's giving us, uh, I guess you can say, a workaround. So this will go to our hand. We've played an additional land, and that was our second turn. So we will go to uh, pass the turn to our other opponents, and now it's our third turn. So remember, untap, upkeep, draw. So we're going to untap. Nothing happens at our upkeep because we don't have cards that say that. And now we're going to draw a card, and it is a Venture Fourth. So we have three mana. We will probably want to cast a Venture, or we cannot. Well, I'll explain that, and I'll explain that right now, actually. So we cannot cast Venture Fourth because we don't have four mana. We don't have three of whatever color or colorless, and we don't have one green. We only have three mana. But it has a Suspend Three. Now, Suspend Three means every time it's your upkeep, you get to remove a counter from this card. So let's suspend it for three. So for one and a red. For one in a green, it says, we can put three counters on this card, and it's exiled. So after three of our upkeeps, we get to remove every one of our upkeeps, we get to remove a counter. But after three upkeeps, we'll be able to cast this for free. We don't have to pay that four mana anymore. So this says, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a land card. Put that onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We're then going to exile this with four Oh, we're going to exile a venture forth with three time counters on it. So this will repeatedly happen, and we just had to pay that two mana investment, which is really good. So that will be our turn, and we will pass. So we'll go to the second, third, and fourth player. It's back to our turn. So the first part of our turn is we're going to untap, upkeep. We're going to remove a counter, so this goes to two. And this is not on the battlefield, by the way. This is in exile still, so nobody can touch it right now. And now we're going to draw. We drew a land, which is a myriad landscape. Let's play that. Now, whenever we play a land, you also have to read the text in it. What is important to explain is that if it is italicized in these basic lands, those are just flavor text. And flavor text is... it's part of explaining what's happening in the story. If it's not italicized, it's not flavor text. It's what you have to abide by. So when Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield, it has to enter tapped. So we're ha we will have to have it tapped. So we can't use it. But we are going to try to cast Passionate 
archaeologists, which we can do for a red and a colorless, or whatever. We could do uh, two mountains instead of a forest if we wanted, which is fine. And it says it's a legendary enchantment background. So this is a permanent on our battlefield. People can interact with this if they wanted to. Commander creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. So this will be very helpful because we like to cast spells from exile a lot. So that's going to be our turn. So when it's our turn again, we're going to untap, upkeep. We're going to remove a counter from Venture Forth, and then we get to draw a card. We drew a Sakura Tribe Elder. We have four mana right now, and we could pay two mana or tap. So I'm thinking we will pay two mana and use Myriad Landscape's ability where we can pay two. Tap this and sacrifice it and get two basic lands on the battlefield tapped, but they have to share a basic land type. So we've met the requirement. We've paid to tap this. And now we have to sacrifice it. And sacrifice is whenever it's only about you. So we are sacrificing. And this goes into our graveyard. And I'm going to get two forests. And they have to be basic lands on the battlefield tapped. And then we have to shuffle our library. The reason we have to shuffle our library is because anytime you go into your deck or your library, you don't want to be cheating and stacking your deck, which means to purposely put good cards in certain places. So maybe we really needed a land, we would put it on top of our library, which would be wrong. So after we shuffled, I recommend around two to three times, and I always cut afterwards. We now have five lands on the battlefield, we have one green mana, which we cannot use right now. So let's go to our next turn. We're going to untap, upkeep, and whenever we remove that last counter, we get to cast this for free. So we'll read it again. We're going to exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a land card. So we met that requirement. Put that card onto the battlefield and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay, so that goes on the, lot, on the battlefield, and we didn't have any cards before it, so now we exile this with three counters on it again, and that just continuously does that for us, which is really cool. And so now I'm going to put the forest together and the mountains together so we can see what we have mana-wise. And we're looking at our hand again. We have six mana. I think it'd be important to cast our commander, so we're going to do that. That's going to cost us at least a red and a green. So we'll meet that. And we have to have one color of anything. So we did that. And we'll read our commander again. So Faldorn says, whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, we get to create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. And what's great is that Venture Forth gets us a land from exile, which is awesome. We can also pay one mana tap Faldorn and discard a card and exile the top card of our library and we can play it this turn. Sadly, we cannot activate her ability because she has summoning sickness. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield that turn, they have summoning sickness, which means you have to wait till your next turn to be able to tap them, which is what the ability is asking us to do. So we can't use that right now, but we're having a great start because we're going to start getting all those exiled spells creating those 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens, and slowly overwhelm our opponents. So let's cast a Sakura Tribe Elder. This is not cast from Exile. It's cast from our hand, and it is costing us one and a colorless, or whatever color we want. This is a 1-1 one, one Snake Shaman. We can sacrifice it and search our library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So typically... I wouldn't recommend sacrificing it on your turn. I would keep it till the next or to the last player before our turn. So that way we can use it as a blocker if needed. But for this example, let's go through it how I just recommended. So we say, all right, we pass our turn. It goes to player two, player three, and player four. And player four will say something like, all right, I'm done with my turn. I'm passing to you. And we will say, 
before you pass your turn, or in response, before you pass, I'm going to sacrifice Sakura Tribe Elder. So this will go to our graveyard, and we get to grab a basic land tapped, and I'm going to grab a mountain. And now that it's going to be our turn, we have to untap. Upkeep, we remove a counter from Venture Forth, and we draw a card. And we drew a Jeska's Will. That's super powerful. So we can now use our commander's ability if we need to. I don't think we will. I really wanted to cast Escape the Wilds, but we don't have an additional land this turn. So it says for three, a red and a green. So for five mana total, it's a sorcery. We're going to exile the top five cards of your library. You may play cards exiled this way until the end of your next turn. So it does cost a lot of mana, and we wouldn't have much to play, so luckily it's until our next turn, and we can play an additional land this turn. So we can't really take advantage of all the card is offering, so we may not play it this turn. Uh, Jessica's Will is really powerful, because for only three mana, if we control our commander, we get both of these and it says, so typically you have to choose one. The first one says, add red mana for each card in target opponent's hand. And the second one says, exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Well, we don't have opponents in this game. So I'm going to judge it off of what we have in our hand. So I'm going to assume the opponent that we're going to target is going to have five cards. So we're going to get five red mana, and we can mark that with a dice just to let us know we have five additional mana. And since we control our commander, we can choose both of these. We can't do two of the same. We have to do one of each. So we're going to exile the top three cards of our library. We have a Cerevix Tome, a Mountain, and a Forest. And we can play them this turn. Well, luckily we have not played a land this turn, so let's talk about that. Since these are in exile and we may play them this turn, let's play a mountain from exile. Now our commander says whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So we're going to grab that token. It's not in our deck, it's just to the side of our play mat. And now we have a 2-2 creature for free. Yeah, our commander's really powerful. And now that we have that five additional red mana, we could cast Escape to the Wilds. So I think I'm going to do that. Let's pay four red mana, because we're paying three of whatever. We have to pay a red, and we have to pay a green. So we're going to do that. And now we have one red mana left. So this says to exile the top five cards of our library. These are going to be a separate pile from the pile that we have from Jessica's Will. We have Dire Fleet Daredevil, Greater Gargadon, a Mountain, Stolen Strategy, and Terramorph. We can play these until our next turn. We can only play these for this turn because that's what Jessica's Will is telling us. We can also play an additional land this turn. So let's play that mountain we got from exile. And whenever we play a spell from exile, we're going to create a 2-2 wolf. And now this will go to the graveyard. So let's take a look at Cerevex Tome. I don't think we'll be playing it. But for four mana, when this enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. We can tap it to add a colorless mana. And if you have the initiative, you can tap it for two colorless instead. We can pay three mana and tap it to exile cards from the top of our library until you exile a non-land card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Activate only if you've completed a dungeon. That is for Jessica's Will. And we get to play these until our next turn. I really enjoy Stolen Strategy. 
Let's read that real quick. I know it's not going to be much help since we do not have opponents, but this is an awesome card for this deck. It's an enchantment for four and a red. So for five mana, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of each opponent's library. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from among those cards exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. So what's really sweet is that we can start playing our opponent's spells, and if they're not playing red and green, we can still cast their spells because now our lands would pay for any color for those spells. So let's cast this card. We'll pay for three red and two green, meeting that requirement of paying a red. And we've cast that from exile. So if we have another wolf token, which we do, we just get that for free for casting exiled spells. It's really, really powerful. And we'll cast Dire Fleet Daredevil because... Actually, let's cast a Terramorph for four mana. Because we still have that red mana, don't we? One, two, three, four. And we'll get rid of that. We'll pay the three mana in addition to that. At least paying a green. And this says we're going to search our library for basic land and put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle. It also has rebound. So if we cast this from our hand, we can exile it as it resolves, which we did not cast it from our hand, but it says at the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. But we did cast a spell from exile, and we get a basic land on the battlefield. So let's, let's see if we have another wolf. If not, we'll have to start using some dice. And we do not. So what I like to do is that since these all have summoning sickness, we can mark them and say we have three wolves with our dice. And we're going to get a basic land on the battlefield. Let's grab a mountain. And since it doesn't say tapped, it will just enter the battlefield. Untapped. We're then going to shuffle. And let's do one more turn and see what we can get. Now that we have so many lands, I typically just kind of fan them out and see what we have there. You don't have to always pile the forest or the mountains together, and these would be exiled forever. We lost these. So typically exile would be sideways next to our graveyard. So this is our graveyard, and our exile pile is below that tapped sideways. We can still cast these until this turn. So we've untapped. Upkeep, we will remove a counter. And we also have at the beginning of our upkeep we're going to exile the top card of each opponent's library. So that would happen, and we could cast those cards until the end of this turn. Since we don't have opponents, we will have to not see what those options are. So these are enchantments, and I'll just put them over here beside each other. I've been missing... you'll, you'll find this a lot in commander games, but when it's common to miss triggers, and this was one of them. I have never actually played this card before. So this says commander creatures you have that you own, which is Faldor, whenever you cast a spell from exile, which we've done a lot of, we get to deal damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. So let's talk about mana value for a second. Mana value is the top right of the card. So Man, this total mana value is 3 plus a red plus a green, so that's 5 for its mana value. So we could deal 5 damage plus whatever we get from this card, which is playing additional land. Getting 5 cards from the top of our library that are in exile that we can play, it's really this is a really powerful card. We can start dealing damage to our opponents in addition to what this deck already wants to do. Or whenever we got that basic land, we could deal an opponent 4 damage. Really silly stuff here. So that was this short example of the Exit from Exile pre-con deck. And if you'd like to purchase it, plus sleeves in a deck box, that will all be in the description down below. If you need any clarification on anything, please leave a comment down below. I can always make an additional video explaining something. And I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.